Good evening from Patterson Hall. Tonight we're going to be taking your questions on new student orientation, admissions, and university housing. Before we get started, we want you to go ahead and start populating your questions for our panel in the Facebook live stream comment section. Tonight, we're live from Patterson Hall. Welcome to Patterson Hall. Tonight we're going to be taking your questions about university housing, admissions, and new student orientation. I'm Josh Wise, joined tonight by Joe Fortune, Dr. Mary Wagner, and Bethany Nazer, and this panel is going to be answering your questions. Just a reminder that you need to populate your questions in the comments section of the Facebook live stream. Before we get started uh, with your questions, we're going to answer a few questions that uh, our guests have, have gotten over the phones and through social media. So let's get started. Bethany, the first question is for you. Um, students want to know uh, when they can start signing up for new student orientation. All right. So everyone will be coming to orientation this summer. And uh, in order to register, our system to register opens on April the 1st. So something key to know, not just April the 1st, but in order to access that system, you must have paid your enrollment deposit. So step one is to pay that enrollment deposit because it takes about 72 hours for then it to populate into our system. But once you do that and 72 hours has passed, our system will open on April 1st. You can access it through um, our website, orientation.sc.edu, and uh, get yourself signed up. Awesome. Thank you. Joe, question from Facebook. Um, they want to know what type of kitchen dishes come in the apartment-style residence halls. Well, if you want to make a meal in your residence hall, you should bring those utensils with you. Um, we recommend that you um, just, you know, wait till you get to campus and come to our local bookstore and you'll find most of the things you need actually there. Awesome. Um, Mary, um, probably a popular question this time. Are scholarships final? Well, um, there are some students that have learned that they are going to receive a scholarship but they just don't know what they're getting yet and so we're still in the process of um, getting those awards posted and we will notify students by email when they hit their um, their admissions portal. Um, that said, once the scholarships are released, um, they are final. Unfortunately, we're unable to negotiate those scholarship packages. Great. Just a reminder that if you have a question, to populate it in the comments section of our Facebook live stream so we can ask our panel. Um, so you're, you're welcome out there for the question about the dishes uh, in the residence halls. So um, next question, back to Bethany. Um, question about, will my parents or a guest be able to join us? during a, that experience? Yes is the short answer, but the uh, longer answer to that is our students do bring their families, their parents, or a guest with them to orientation. The high majority of our students are bringing them, which is important because no student wants to think they're the only person that's going to be there with fanny pack wearing dad, but, uh, that our parents <laughs> will be there with guests. And important to know too that while we're at orientation, which is a two-day session for our freshman students, is there are things, of course, that you do with students as parents and guests when you're there, but there is intentional programming that is just for parents and guests, separate from students, to get the kind of information you need. So make sure that when you are making that selection and registering after April the 1st for orientation, that you're also considering uh, signing up and having parents and guests come, because it is certainly part of that process and what we find to be the most successful way to go through that process. Sure. Thank you, Bethany. Um, Joe, a lot of people ask this question this time of year as they're starting to sign up for housing. On campus, housing is mandatory for first year students, but what if I live close by? Well, on campus housing is required for first year students. Um, if you live um, in the Columbia area, um, we do allow you to ap apply for an exemption, and those exemptions are rarely granted, let me point that out, but if you have a circumstance or circumstances where you want us to consider your appeal, we'll be happy to do that. And most of those appeals are related to medical situations or financial hardship. Okay. Um, Joe, I'm going to stay with you for a second. We're starting to look at our uh, move-in as well. What about what days are we going to be moving in this year? 
We are happy to announce that move-in will be on two days this year, August 19th and 20th. And so it is not a weekend, it is a Monday and Tuesday. And so you'll be getting more information about that in the coming months as we begin to you know, work on housing assignments after the May 1st deadline. Awesome. Bethany, um, why is it so important to attend orientation? Orientation is really the first opportunity where you are a student at the University of South Carolina. So being able to come and, and do several things, getting to learn more about the resources and opportunities that are available to you during your journey here, um, being able to sign up and register for classes and get your Carolina card, being able, I think one of the most critical things is to meet fellow students um, to begin to, to create that community that's so critical to your transition to the university. Um, and as I've said, and, and to bring family with you so that we can also prepare family for the transition to coming to the university. Awesome. Um, so kind of Mary, back off of that, um, if, if you're in a special program like honors, um, do you get to sign up for classes at orientation like everyone else, or do you do that beforehand? When do you sign up for classes as an honor student? Well, honors handles it a little bit differently. They will reach out to the students that have deposited by May 1 and um, talk to you about getting your class scheduled together a little bit early. So they'll, they'll probably Skype with you or find another way to reach you um, online and they'll help pull together your schedule. And that way you can focus on all of the events that are going on during orientation, meeting friends, meeting other people who work within the Honors College, um, learning about the culture and the traditions of the university, which are also very important. It's not just about getting your schedule at orientation. And I will say those honor students who um, will also come to orientation, just like Mary mm -hmm. uh, mentioned, that they're also um, required to come. But they will also still meet with the Honor College while they're there. They'll do some additional advising and some additional schedule changes and things like that. So they will still have time with the Honors College while here at orientation. Awesome. Thank you. Joe, um, from Facebook, uh, what living community would be best for an education major? Well, all of our communities actually will be great for an, in, uh, for an education major, and so um, we have several that you can choose from. Right now, we don't have one specifically dedicated to students that are majoring in education, but you know, I've seen students um, select from many of our options, everything to include um, our Galen Health Fellows, um, you know, the music community, if they have an interest in music. So there's just a lot of options that are out there, even if there's not one specific to your major, and those are called our associated living and learning communities. And sometimes it really depends, too, on wh who your roommate will be. And so you really need to have those conversations unless you both are of the same major and kind of make more of an informed choice that way. Awesome. Um, so here's another question about uh, housing. Um, is East Quad the only residence hall for business majors? East Quad is the only residence hall for business majors, um, and it um, is a very competitive process. We typically have way more um, demand than we have space available, and so um, just know that when you are making those choices and you're talking to your roommates, that again, you're, you're taking the time to really kind of do your homework, if you will, prior to making those selections. But it is a very competitive process for that business community. Okay. Here's one I'm going to loft up to whomever would like to take it. Uh, when do students get assigned their academic advisors in order to determine class selection, and is it different for students in the Honors College? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the stairs came this way. Um, there's a difference because you have orientation advising and you have your advising that happens in the fall. And um, so first, for just a non-honors students, when you come to orientation and meet with your advisor, it won't necessarily be your assigned first-year advisor. Every student is assigned a first-year advisor. By the time you come to orientation, you'll know that first-year advisor, but it's not necessarily who you'll meet with um, at orientation. And so that's key to know um, is that, that you will meet with your school and with your college and with your major. Um, the honors advisors, um, the honors students will get those advisors assigned before um, they come to orientation also. Um, not necessarily does always their advisor also do their Skype um, advising. And so and I can't remember if there's any other part of that question. That um, I can... No, I think that I think you've kind of covered I that. I think one thing that I'll, I will mention that will occur for students to help, because academic advising at, in, in college and at a university is different than the advising you go through in high school. And so one of the things that we have done to help uh, introduce that process to students is 
once you go in to register for orientation, you are in that same portal that you register for orientation, you are going to find there a link to several um, online modules that focus on the academic advising process at the University of South Carolina. There are, you watch them before you come to orientation. There's a worksheet that you complete that allows you to prepare for your academic advising because we know it's a new process for students and families. And so we make sure that before you get here, you understand how that process will work because, again, advising is different at orientation than it is when you get here in, in the fall. Perfect. Just a reminder that if you have questions for our panel uh, about admissions, about housing, or uh, about new student orientation, to populate those questions in the comments section of our Facebook live stream. But before we go any further, we want to tell you about an awesome program that's being launched this year in our communities called FIGS, or First Year Interest Groups. Here's more information about what a FIG is and how you can be a part of it. As a resident at the University of South Carolina, you will be a member of a living and learning community. Learning communities are a way of helping you transition to life at college and provide you with academic support in a residential setting. All residence halls at the University of South Carolina are home to living and learning communities. So no matter the style of the building or the location, as a resident, you are part of a community. Some buildings have only one community with a large number of residents, and other buildings have multiple smaller communities. Many of the communities within a residence hall have a FIG, or a first year interest group. A first year interest group is a concentrated area within a community that focuses on a specific topic. FIGs are made up of 19 residents that take four core classes together. This smaller interest group provides students with the opportunity to excel in an academic environment that allows students to also live together. Residents that participate in FIGs typically see a smoother social transition into college life, have smaller peer study groups, have additional outside the classroom interaction with faculty and staff, and typically have a better connection to campus. What does this all spell out for the resident in the end? Well, it typically provides for higher grades, more likely to stay in school, better sense of community, and finally, residents have a higher satisfaction rate with their Carolina academic experience. Now that you have all of the information, you simply have to go to the housing application and express interest in participating in a FIG or first year interest group. You will be notified shortly after you express interest and a formal application will be required. Once submitted, you will be reviewed for acceptance. Remember, space is limited in each area to only 19 residents. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit Housing's website at www.housing.sc.edu. Welcome back, and we're going to get right back into some of your questions. Um, Joe, is housing selection priority based on the date you submitted your application? It is not. It is based on the date of your application to the institution. Um, and so, more importantly, though, it is based on how you answer your questions to those living and learning community applications, and that is a completely separate process. And so, um, our community education team, which is made up of housing staff members and faculty members will review those applications and they will decide who to invite to join those living and learning communities. But for the general, more general process, it is based on your application to the institution. All right, perfect. Um, Bethany, can you give us a little more of what you're going to be doing while you're at orientation? Absolutely. So as I've said, um, orientation is a two-day process. Um, for freshman students and their families. Those sessions, just as something to think about, you start in mid-June, and they run throughout the month of June and July. And when you're here for those two days, you'll do a variety um, of things. We will, of course, hear from uh, faculty and staff on campus, hear from resources, um, but also there's an opportunity to get into a small group um, with peers. Your orientation leaders will lead those groups. You'll have four of those throughout orientation that really give you a student perspective and allow you to get to start getting prepared to come here. There's what I call the choose your own adventure part of orientation, which is we'll have a series of breakout students, uh, breakout sessions. So you can kind of see what is most important to you in your journey here at the university and make some decisions about what else you'd like to learn. One of the parts of orientation is also that you stay overnight um, in the residence halls. It's required for all students to stay overnight in the residence halls, and that gives you an opportunity to get a glimpse into the community, to also connect um, with your peers. We'll have activities that evening that are student-only activities. And then our day two of orientation really is an opportunity to prepare you for advising um, and to allow you to hear more from your college, your, your 
both your parents and family and guests will have an opportunity to meet with your college and for students to get through academic advising and get your Carolina card so when you get home, you can prove to everybody that you're actually a student at the University of South Carolina. So Bethany or Mary, next question is, if I go to the last orientation session, yeah. am I gonna end up in the classes? Are you gonna end up with classes? You will end up with classes. Yeah. I, I think that there's always, I'll tell you there, that you will absolutely end up with classes and not just classes, but degree applicable classes because we could put you in 15 hours of any classes, but we um, have a commitment to um, get students registered for 15 hours of degree applicable classes. Two things, one, certainly as you move through the summer, time selections can, can start to vary. Um, some on what's available, you know, we have students who come in and don't wanna have any Friday classes and that's their goal. It's been my goal too, but it um, doesn't always work. And so sometimes as you move through the summer, the time availability of classes will shift. The other thing that happens is we do have a new initiative on this campus that's called On Your Time Graduation. And what their role is throughout the summer is I work with them to monitor course availability throughout the summer so that as we're hitting things are hitting capacity as we're seeing that then they can work to open additional sections throughout the summer. So it's not just like day one, every section of every course is opened on day one and it's just a free for all throughout the whole summer. There is a system of kind of as the summer goes, monitoring those, those classes to help students get registered. Perfect. Um, Mary, I guess the next question for you, what are the next important dates if you've gotten a yes packet, what's the next important date for you if, mm -hmm. if you're considering Carolina? Well, if you haven't had a chance to visit or if you need to come back and visit, I would encourage people to come back during one of our admitted student days. And information about those dates and registering for those dates is available to you um, online on your admissions checklist. We are pretty full for the March admitted student day, but we still have some availability for the April one. So um, we'd encourage you to go out there and sign up for one of those. You can also take a campus tour during the week. There's availability um, at different times, Monday through Friday. And um, we're pretty good about accommodating everybody who needs to come in during the week. So if you want to come in and do that, um, please plan ahead. Don't just show up. It'll be more difficult for us to accommodate you if you walk in. Um, we'd like to know when you're coming just so that we can make arrangements for you to be there and make sure you get to talk to everybody you want to talk to. So I think that that's probably the most, thing, most important thing you can do. Solidify that decision. Around the first week of April, you'll start to get information about your federal financial aid um, as well as any state-based aid like lottery scholarships if you're a South Carolina resident, um, loans, Pell Grant, work study, things like that. And you'll also be able to see that in combination with any merit aid that you may have received from the admissions office. So you'll find out about general university scholarships from the admissions office before you'll find out how they pair up with your um, federal and state financial aid. But you'll have the whole package laid out for you within the first week of April. And then your enrollment deposit is due by May 1. It's non-refundable, okay. $200. Perfect. Let's get back into questions now uh, in the housing world. Uh, put you on the hot spot, Joe. When will we know housing assignments? You will know your building assignment prior to orientation. And Bethany, the first day of orientation is? It's the middle of June. I think it's June. Mid June. So our goal is to let students and families know building assignments or community assignments prior to the first day of orientation. Um, you will not know your actual. Um, room number or roommate assignments until mid-July. Next question has to do with roommates. Is there a method of requesting suite mates in addition to roommates? Uh, first year students are only allowed to request one roommate and so that is the person sharing the sleeping space with you in most cases. Um, however, if you are interested in our, our park place location, we will allow you to select more than one roommate there. Okay. But all the other housing options, you can only request one roommate. Now, when you're selecting Park Place, are you, can you do that on the application? You cannot do that on the application. <clears throat> Once you indicate that you're interested in Park Place, the coordinator for that community, which is Chad May, um, he, will, um, he will be reaching out to students as they express interest to say, do you have additional roommates you'd like for us to consider? Okay. Um, what residence halls are for the sports management community and how does request, uh, the request for housing with special accommodations work? Sports entertainment management is located in Bates West, um, which is an apartment style community on the south side of campus. Um, and we typically um, 
have pretty high demand for that community. And so again, a very competitive process. And so um, get applications in early, even though it does not um, impact who's selected for it. You just want to make sure you don't wait until May 1st to try to sort things out like roommates and those kinds of things. Sure. In terms of the accommodations piece, if you have a documented um, disability or you have a need for specific accommodations, um, you need to make sure that you're reaching out to our Office of um, Student Disabilities or Student Disability Resource Center and they will um, advise you and recommend um, housing accommodations to us based on your, your specific need. Perfect. With that being said, we want to give you a little more information about how to call Carolina home this fall, and we'll be back right after this. Hello, future Gamecocks, and welcome home. I'm Darion, and a few other students and I work as University Housing Spurs at the University of South Carolina. Today, we'll be giving you some ins and outs of the housing application process. Let's get started. You have probably already received your fall information and online application guide in your Yes Packet. This guide is the first step in getting you ready to complete your housing application. The housing application is typically available online at my.se.edu by mid-January and the deadline for the housing application is May 1st. The housing application is designed to allow you to sign up for a community based on your interests or academic goals. This means housing at Carolina is about which living and learning community fits you best and not the location of the bathroom or the style of the building. Before you begin filling out the application, you will need to do your research. You will want to visit housing.sc.edu to find out more about our communities and find your interest group experiences before you get started. From there, create a list of your top five communities that will interest you most. Here you will have the opportunity to sign up for classes with other people in your community called FIGS. But make sure you don't forget to select your top five communities first. Once you begin the housing application, remember that some live and learn communities are highly competitive and require a supplemental application. For instance, Capstone, or you must be a Capstone Scholar. Another thing that you want to consider prior to starting the online application is whom you live with next year. Don't worry if you don't already have a roommate picked out. RoomSync provides ways for you to find a roommate that best matches your interests and academic goals based on the answers you submit within the application. Last but not least, if you need any special accommodations, you need to indicate that on your housing application. This could range anywhere from allergies to physical assistance. You also need to register with the Student Disability Resource Center at their website for housing to best assign you with the best accommodation possible. Now that you've done your research, you are ready to log into my.se.edu to begin your application process. And one last thing, the University of South Carolina has campuses all over the state so make sure you select Columbia Campus Fall Application to get started. Good luck and see you at home next fall. Welcome back, and as we cover questions about the next steps to calling Carolina home, we want to get into a little more specifics. So some of our questions we're going to take during this segment are really going to focus on what you need to do getting ready to call Carolina home. So Bethany, I want to start with you about what do we need to do between now and coming to orientation? Absolutely. So we have covered that we're going to pay enrollment deposits, sign up for housing and pay housing deposits, and register for orientation. And then, students, you don't just go into full summer mode. There are some things you've got to take care of. And, the, and most importantly, because you want to take care of them to ensure you have the smoothest transition to the University of South Carolina. There are so many um, things to take care of before you start as a student. Easy for them to fall through the cracks. And so make sure that you are getting familiar with your, um, your checklist. You can find that checklist um, in your Self-Service Carolina portal. You can also find a link to it through the orientation website. Um, and so make sure that you're looking, and that checklist is going to tell you everything that needs to be done before coming to orientation. And those include, uh, you know, everything from getting your Carolina card to registering with disability services 
to watching those uh, module videos for academic advising. One of the other critical things you'll need to do is, I'm sorry to tell you, you'll have some homework and some assignments this summer because you will have to participate in some testing before you come to orientation. That's both for foreign language and for math placement. And so the math placement test is done online and you'll want to go and take that online at least five days before you come to orientation. And then our foreign language placement test you actually take um, here on campus. It is an in-person test, but you have to register for it. A separate registration process to get ready for that foreign language placement exam. Most individuals will take it the day before their orientation session, what I would call day zero. So if you're coming to orientation on Monday and Tuesday, that Sunday, they'll have foreign language placement exams for you to take on that Sunday. And then the great thing is, is we will have those scores uploaded into your system so your um, academic advisors can see them um, by, the, uh, by academic advising on day two, so really helpful. But make sure you are connecting with those checklists, that you're looking through them, uh, because if you don't do the things that are on there, it will either slow down your process, cause you to get a hold, or cost you more money. So make sure you check into those. Absolutely. Residency. Residency, citizenship, immunization, <clears throat> all things that will become a really common part of your vernacular very soon. And I think that's a great transition. Many of the things you'll have to do at orientation are also things you'll need before you move into your residence hall this fall. So make sure that the, th the checklist you're working on you'll take care of prior to coming to orientation will help you with a smooth transition into your residence hall on move-in day. One of our questions is about when is move-in day, and Joe, you mentioned it a little earlier, but why don't just recap for the people that are just joining us. Yeah, so uh, move-in will be on Monday, August 19th, and Tuesday, August 20th, and so it is a two-day pro two process, and so one of the things that we ask you to do is keep your eyes and ears open for emails and things in the mail related to move-in. All that will be coming your way again soon after um, the May 1st deadline and we begin to make housing assignments. Um, students and parents, you won't, be a, you won't be able to arrive outside of your assigned time. That's so important. And so if you've been assigned to come in on Monday the 19th, do not um, come in before that. And if you've been assigned to come in on Tuesday the 20th, do not show up on Monday the 19th. Um, because we have a, this process in place for a reason, and it's to make sure that students and parents have a smooth move-in, a convenient move-in. And so we don't want elevators to be crowded. We don't want you waiting out in the sun. We want you to have a great experience here at Carolina. And the first thing is making sure that you can move into your home without any um, long waits. Very good. Mary, I don't want to miss two questions that came in for you. Mm -hmm. um, when are Capstone Scholars uh, announced? And on top of that, when are general scholarship notifications going out? Yeah, so those usually will come out very close to each other, and um, and we are very <laughs> close to finishing all of our coding um, for who's going to get those. So I would expect that students are going to hear maybe sooner than we promised. We promised mid-March, but I think it could be sooner than that. So that's good news. Okay, awesome. Um, a couple more questions, Joe, real quick before we uh, end tonight. Um, people want to know about the priority when they're signing up for housing. Um, what is, how do you do priority of how you make a selection for where someone's assigned? Priority for how you make a selection for where they're assigned. And so on the application, students are allowed to rank up to five um, community choices. And so the assignment coordinators will look at those rankings and based on your eligibility, um, or your invitation to join those, um, we will make assignments based on that. Okay. And um, a question, any of you can answer this, but will someone with food allergies need to submit a form with the disabilities office? Yes. To, to handle um, any food allergies, you would register for our Disability Resource Center. And you would want to, I'll say, anybody for any accommodations, dietary, mobility, learning, any accommodation you would need, Make sure that you're making contact um, with that uh, Disability Resource Center before coming to orientation because oftentimes what they'll do is set up a time for you to meet in person when you're here, but you have to have made prior contact and registered in order to get that process started. But yes, that's, that's who would take care of that. And it's also important there on your housing application, if you have a need related to um, accommodations, make sure that you check that box on the application because we will make sure that you get 
in touch with the right office to be able to make sure that you're submitting the right information that you need to. Because it's so important, again, for us to know that prior to beginning the assignment process, and we will be quickly moving into that mode um, after May 1st. And so if you um, are not all set and ready to, um, in terms of documentation and those kinds of things prior to an assignment being made, it's sometimes difficult to make changes late July, early August, want to be before that time. Perfect. As our show's coming to a conclusion tonight, any last comments you have uh, for students that are trying to decide whether to call Carolina home? I think that the University of Carolina offers an unbelievable uh, opportunity for students to create their own journey here, to be able to become part of a community that is rich with tradition, that, but also to encourage, to allow, to put their stamp on their time here and to be able to walk away with the degree that sets them um, in a forward progression uh, after the university with a really strong network of alumni to continue to support uh, past your time here at the university. Um, I, I, now that everybody who is going to learn of their decision knows about it now, um, we've released all of our admissions decisions. Um, I'm a graduate of the University of South Carolina, and I am just always constantly stunned by the, the number of people that I still run into from my undergraduate days, some people that still work here, people that I meet out on the road in the high schools, and now they're bringing their kids here, and I, I just, it, it is just this overwhelming reminder of this sense of belonging that I really enjoyed while I was here at the university that I never expected to experience at a really large university. And we do a really good job at making a big place feel small. And it's hard to make a small small space seem really big. And so when you want the resources of a big school, that's there. But it's really easy to get to know people. I think people just assume that it might not be because of the size of the institution. But we work really, really hard to make sure people feel like they fit in. And as Mary said, um, a sense of community. And so in your residence halls, we're going to work very hard to make sure you feel that sense of community. And we have a fantastic staff um, in residence life that will offer you all kinds of support, personal and academic. And uh, there's no place like home. Absolutely. Well, thank you to our entire panel, and thank you for joining us tonight. However, the conversation doesn't end here. We'll continue answering your questions via the live stream, as well as on our Twitter page, at U of SC Housing. So from everyone here at the University of South Carolina, good night, and we'll see you this fall.